back for another Wednesday episode, and today we're going to be doing a nice and simple radiator swap on my buddy Tim's Miata. If you've ever bought a Miata, you know one of the things to look for is condition of your radiator. In this case, Tim's looks like chocolate milk, which is a telltale sign that one day, randomly while driving down the road, it's probably going to pop. So we want to get ahead of that so it doesn't get stranded on the side of the road. So to fix that, I got a new radiator. We're just going to pull this one out, swap the fans over, and throw the new one in. It's like couple volts it's actually really easy so let's get to it so you can see here what I'm talking about uh, it's really really brown this is an OEM radiator it's still got all the Japanese warning signs on it uh, the car's got 130,000 miles, and I'm really impressed that it's made it this far. Uh, it is a 1995, so this radiator is 25 years old as it sits. And it looks like it's about ready to pop, so let's get it out of here. The first thing I'm going to do is take out this crossover tube. This Heimholtz resonator uh, is pretty big, and it might interfere with the fan motor. So we'll just rip it out of there real quick. Everything else can stay. Don't take the airbox out. Just unhook it from here and here, and just pull this piece off. So the next step here is to drain the coolant, but since he's got air conditioning, we actually have to take his under tray off. Uh, I got to unhook the AC lines that they bolt up to the fan. So before I get the coolant flowing through that porthole on the under tray, I'm just going to take the under tray out. I'll set you up. There's 11 bolts. Uh, it's pretty easy as long as the bolts come out. So these are the AC lines I was talking about, and you can see they hook up right here. Um, this is one of the eight fan bolts. That's just a 10 millimeter, and if you can get this out, it's kind of stuck in there. It's easiest. Uh, the other way is you can remove this guy, which pulls the bracket off, and you can pull the whole thing out once you take these two out. But I'd rather just remove this one if I can, so we'll give that a shot. Draining the radiator is actually really easy. It's just this Phillips head screw bolt thing right here. Put a bucket below the car before you drain it, obviously, but I just want to take your biggest Phillips head screwdriver. I've never stripped one of these out, but I always feel like you could. And once it's out, if you take out the top radiator cap, it'll flow really freely. One eternity later. So once it's pretty much empty, you can see it's dripping a little bit there. Uh, I always just throw the old cap back in, just finger tight. That way it's not leaking out of there when I pull the radiator. Then your next step, while you're still under the car, undo this clamp on the lower hose and pull it off the radiator. There's still going to be fluid in here, so as you can see I've got the bucket here still. Pull the clamp, pop this back, and drain the rest of the fluid into your bucket. And that should be it for the bottom of the car. So fluid's drained, crossover tube is removed. Uh, I put the cap back on here just so that I don't misplace it. Uh, we're going to want to take this overflow hose off. This is probably going to be the same deal as below where I can't actually pull the hose off. So we're going to take our little pliers here and twist and pull. It comes off easy as that. It works every single time. So once that's done, the next step is going to be to unscrew this upper radiator hose here. It's uh, This has been replaced apparently. Typically it's just one of these crimp clamps, but here it's a flathead screwdriver. You don't have to do this next step, but it helps. Uh, if you loosen this clamp here or move it out of the way and either remove or just rotate this hose. See right now it's like resting above the radiator. We want it to be out of the way so we can just pull straight up. So I'm just going to clamp that, rotate this, and pull the radiator out that way. So once you get that hose out of the way, the next thing we'll want to do is unhook the two fans from the car. If you have AC, you have one over here. If you don't, you'll notice there's no fan there. 
and your everybody has a driver's side fan. Uh, I'll get a close-up of these clips. They're different, uh, and this one is a bit weird to remove, so uh, I'll show you guys the process on how that goes. So here's the driver's side one. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. There's this tab over here. You just want to compress that. I can't do it one-handed, but we'll compress that and separate these. On the passenger side, it's this white clamp here. And what you want to do is get a little screwdriver. I don't know if I can get in there. Little screwdriver and pull up on this flap and the black connector. Let me see if I can do it one-handed. Ah, sweet. This black connector will slide out. Uh, apparently you can do it with a finger now. So that's the passenger side fan. Now we just got to unhook this one. Everything should be unhooked at this point, and the radiator is just essentially bolted in here as a dummy unit. There's two more bolts that we're going to want to take out. They're 12 millimeters, and they are each on the side of the radiator. There's one right there, and there is one right here. So those are what actually hold the radiator in the car. The bottom is held in with these rubber gaskets that I'll show you uh, once I pull this guy out. So the next step is as easy as it seems. You just grab both sides. Um, the bottom is held in by essentially a press fit little rubber gaskets. So you have to pull a little bit. And then the whole thing will just snap right out. Regulate you your way out. It may leak some coolant on the way out. So be mindful of that. So old radiator is out. Here's the new one. This is, I believe, a Rock Auto or uh, Amazon replacement. Uh, I put these in tons of cars, they work perfectly well. Uh, one thing to note that throws a couple people off is these down here. Uh, it's like an optional cooler, so you can run, I believe it's uh, power steering fluid to it. Uh, or oil, I guess it doesn't really matter what you put into it. I've never hooked one up, so I don't know how well they work. Uh, these come, obviously, no fans. And like I mentioned earlier, those rubber gaskets that hold it into the bottom of the, the engine bay. We're going to have to swap those over uh, into these spots, but other than that, it's a drop-in unit. Uh, and if you've taken your old radiator out, you'll have all the hardware to put this one in. So here's the old radiator. You can see it's really brown and looks pretty bad. And then direct comparison to the new radiator where, you know, this looks, it is brand new, so it looks brand new. This is what it should look like if you ever buy a Miata. It needs to be this color, not that color. That's really bad. Swapping the fans is really easy. There's eight bolts. We already took the one out of the bottom there, but there's four per fan, 10 millimeter bolts. Just back them out, pop them over to the other one, screw them back in. So. So we're gonna leave this bolt out because that's where the AC compressor hooks up, or AC lines hook up. So I'm gonna leave that out until it's in the car, but everything else is bolted up. So now we're gonna switch these little rub rubber grommet guys over uh, and I'll show you how that happens. Here we have the old radiator and these are what hold it into the bottom of the car. And if you look on the back side here, there is a, it's kind of hard to capture, but there's a little C-clip right here. Um, we're gonna have to pop that out really carefully. You don't wanna lose these. Um, I typically, cover them with my hand and pop them off with a really small like jeweler screwdriver but anything that lets you get inside of one of those two pockets will do the one thing i forgot to mention is there's two of these as well this is what the bolt uh sits through so it's like a brass uh sleeve with a rubber bushing around it uh, we gotta take this out because the new one doesn't come with it and all it is is this little brass guy on the back side. Uh, make sure you take this out before you try to take the rubber out, otherwise you'll screw it all up. And then the rubber, you can take a screwdriver and just pull, and out it comes, just like that. So you'll want to reinstall this first and then put the brass pushing it on the new radiator. You can see there's a spot where it's not split. That obviously goes uh, here where the opening is. So no split. Out like that. So here's the same spot on the new radiator. So we're going to go ahead and push this rubber bushing in. And 
and then the brass bushing so this is where the bolt sits since the load is going to be on this face you want the big flat face to be on the same side as the fans and just push that in the pocket and then repeat it on the other side next we're going to want to reinstall these uh, seating bushings or I don't even know what these are called but these go in this pocket and what you'll see is that it barely sticks through this other side here so when you put the c-clip on if you just compress the rubber you can push it let me see if I can get my hand behind it you can push it and it gives you plenty of room and then the easiest way to do it is to take the clip try and press it on as good as you can with your hand and then take a pair of uh, like channel locks or something and just carefully push it make sure you've got something there to stop it from flying away uh, like I said you don't want to lose these most people don't have spares of these sitting in their garage so another good thing to check while we're here is never assume that the radiator they send you that this is tight and you do not want to fill it up and it's just snug and you go down driving down the road and all of a sudden your coolant just dumps out so take your trusty screwdriver put it in there that's tight so shouldn't be at any risk and we'll be ready to throw this one in the car so install the opposite of removal uh, we're gonna set this up here make sure everything is out of your way so no wires hanging in there or anything and then what you'll do is we'll set it in there slide it by everything and then you'll just have to give it a little stuff to get the uh, rubber gaskets to seat That's all it is, so you'll just feed the two 12mm bolts in through here. Once you got the radiator back in, bolted up, and all the fans hooked up, the rest is simple. We just turn the hoses back around, put them back where they're supposed to be, uh, put the under tray back on, and put the intake crossover tube in and we'll bleed the cooling system so i'm gonna time lapse you through the top here uh, you've seen it all come out so let's just go back in uh, and then i'll throw the bottom cover on i don't think you guys need to see that and uh, i'll show you how to bleed the cooling system it's actually really easy on these cars compared to something like a k-series or something like that uh, yeah let's get to it Once you got everything hooked up, it's time to fill it with coolant. This is the best time to make sure that you are 100% sure that you hooked everything up. Um, with this, there's really only two hoses that you could screw up, but if you're you know, doing an engine swap or whatever, you want to make sure that all your hoses are hooked up. I've filled these up before, and you know you get a halfway, uh, halfway full with the jug, and all of a sudden you hear dripping somewhere else because, I don't know, maybe the heater core wasn't tight or something like that. So make sure everything's tight. The, the drain bolt, the upper hose, the lower hose, any other hoses that you touched with. Once you know everything's tight, you can go ahead and fill it. You can do this a couple ways. Uh, I used to just kind of pour it in here, leave the cap off, uh, get the car up to temperature, and then add more fluid. Um, what I bought initially for the K Miata is this. It's a little uh, fill funnel. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. It comes with a bunch of these fittings. They fit all sorts of different radiators. Um, this is the one that fits the stock Miata radiator setup. Uh, put it in here, take their cap which has a hole in it, and then just twist it to tight and this just sits right in the top there. So what you'll do is you'll fill the whole radiator and you'll fill this up to, I don't know, somewhere around an inch above the, uh, the angle there. And then as the car heats up and the thermostat opens and whatnot, it'll cycle coolant and it'll pull the rest of the coolant through this. Uh, and you won't have to you won't have to fight air bubbles or anything. Uh, and then when you're done, you just cap it. You pull the whole thing out, and you can drain it into a uh, uh, the coolant jug that you had. So definitely recommend one of these. It's been a lifesaver, and they're like they're pretty cheap. So definitely worth investing in.
once you've got coolant in it, uh, that's really the end of any sort of real work that has to go on. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna, just going to go turn the car on, idle it, uh, obviously open the garage door, and let the car get up to temperature, so about halfway on the, the coolant temp needle. And that's when the thermostat will open, and any extra air that's trapped in the system at that point will rush out. And if it hasn't bled already, you'll see a bunch of bubbles come up through here, and that'll be it. You'll cap this, pull it out, and we'll be done. So a good way to know when the thermostat has opened is when the fans turn on. It takes quite a while, it's probably like 15 minutes or so. Um, I almost jumpered the fan just to make sure that it still worked. It took so long. So you'll see that the coolant in here uh, is not as pink as it was earlier. It's because it mixed with the old coolant that was in the system, so it's a little dirtier than what we just put in. Also a good telltale sign that the coolant's all dispersed everywhere. I believe we're all set to go. Uh, the nice thing about this you know, you're probably looking at this thing and how do you get all the extra coolant out of there? It comes with this little stopper. You just plug the hole in the bottom. Grab your coolant jug. Balance it. And then you'll lose a little bit at the bottom. Put it on there. Pull the pin. And dump all of your extra old coolant back where it belongs. I like to take a little paper towel, soak up what's left, uh, if it doesn't get sucked in through here, which it typically does not in this case. So there we go. You can tell it's steaming. It's hot for sure. So be careful. Uh, this isn't under pressure, obviously. There's a direct hole right to the radiator, so. Um, but this is definitely warm because the car is hot. So pop that off. Take your radiator cap. This is the one that I took off of his old radiator. And that's a wrap. We're just going to set it down on the floor and uh, I'm going to take it for a quick little test lap, but it seemed to be doing well, so I'm, I have no concerns that it's not going to be perfectly fine. This is a nice simple fix that, you know, if your radiator blows up, you can easily do this in your driveway with some general hand tools. So let me know what you think below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, the likes and comments, I love comments. Uh, it's my favorite thing to read and the likes really help us out with channel growth. So we really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, we're having loads of fun still, so we're gonna keep doing this uh, as long as we can. But see you uh, in the next Wednesday episode.